first verse, and they've chosen the right verse, praise God, is the understanding, and it's said biblically in another way like this, that the fulfilling of the law is love, love is the fulfilling of the law. So when people say they've done away with the law, I look at them in shock. I say to them, so you've quit loving, have you? You've quit loving. You've thrown away the law. Because instead of a set of do's and don'ts, the law is actually loving. The first four commandments, love God with all your heart and the last six and your neighbor as yourself. Love is the fulfilling of the law. If that's penetrating your thinking, you'll know how to handle objections that are raised about doing away with the law. It's an excellent beginning here. So with that thought in our minds that it's love that fulfills the law, what verse did you go to next? This table over here. We did not discern a second one yet. I wasn't here for some of the discussion, but I would have picked out verse number five. For we, in the Amplified, not relying on the law, but through the Holy Spirit's help, by faith anticipate and wait for the blessings and the good, which are righteous in us and right standing with God, our conformity to his will and purpose and thought and action causes us to hope. And what verse was that you just verse read? Verse 5. <laughs> amplified. Amplified. Oh, it's the Amplified. That's very good, isn't it? Huh? That's right. Wow. All right, uh, let's put that on hold for a minute. It's an excellent thought. If it came out as well in the regular translations, we'd be jumping up and down with unusual enthusiasm. Let's see what c yet is to come out. What second verse struck you? Surely I'm not going to have to come back to this table again, am I? Surely you had a look of great expectations on your you face. Surely, and I thought. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you can interpret that either way you like. Surely, surely. <laughs> well, I guess I would have chosen 16 for one of them. That if I'm walking in the spirit, I will not carry out the desires of the flesh, which mm -hmm. is to say that that would be a keeping of the law. Of Link it. And you're in a mark. You've opened a door a millimeter, Shirley. Would you like to open it fully and walk through it? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing you, I think you might want to do this. And what further passage could you add to that what, now, 19, Shirley? 20, 19, 20. That would just open the door fully. It's an excellent thought. If you're walking by the Spirit, now let the words hit you and you'll know where to go. If you're walking by the Spirit, you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Surely, if you're walking by the Spirit, where do you want to go in this chapter? If you're walking by the Spirit. Looks like your crew is deserting you here too. Uh, you're all going to sink together, are you? We're just 18, if you know that one. If you're walking by the Spirit, and where is that spelled well, out? 22 and 23. <laughs> All right, 22 and 23. Marty, go ahead and read Thank that you. out for us. Thank you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. So the fruit of the Spirit is love. And what have we already found out about love? It's the fulfilling of the law. But what does it mean when it says, under such there is no law? Well now, think in light of the argument that's come through the whole chapter now. So, there's no law against this, it's actually in agreement with this. Excellent, Andrea. I was Becky thinking has arisen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just I was hang on, I'll have to sit down and prepare oh. myself for this, okay? <laughs> Go ahead. I think I was thinking it's fulfilling the law with its highest nature. All right. With grace. Well, you uh, can't fulfill the law if you're walking according to the flesh. 
Mm -hmm. it, it takes the higher nature. Mm -hmm. And the higher nature comes about when Christ is, living with Christ is in. It's very good, Becky. It's an excellent thought. Yes. I, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Finish your statement. But. No, well, that was it, more or less. But anyway, <laughs> when you think about judges and different people you've met and some people you want to work under and others you don't want yes, to work under, yes, yes. Everyone has the law, but it's how it's given. Yeah. So when yeah. we're serving people and we're being, we're in, in the serving right. service, I'm sorry to say, then we're in service with grace, following the law, raising justice. It's, it's a different, mm. it's good. <laughs> so if you know the judge, it helps too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> God. Christ. Very good, yes. And if you know the judge, and, and in this case the judge is also the one who's in you, mm -hmm. through the Spirit. I had an unpaid ticket uh, several years ago, and I'd totally forgotten about it, and no one had reminded me of it, and I'd changed addresses. And I got no notification on it. I even called the court, and they told me I didn't have a ticket, but unfortunately I did. And uh, eventually it caught up with me when... I must have got stopped a second time, I guess, and uh, they researched and found this. And so I was sent to criminal court because I had not dealt with this ticket from years ago. So I found myself in criminal court with a lot of rather interesting characters. This was down in Orange County. <laughs> and I'm with a lot of very undesirable characters in this courtroom. And I wore a suit deliberately so that, you know, I'd heard if you go to court looking good, <laughs> it makes an impression. So I deliberately put on a suit knowing that I'd probably be the only one there in a suit, you know. And I was. Anyway, the judge noticed me. And uh, he, I wasn't dealt with in the first sitting. I sat for like two hours and listened to all these horrible things that people had done. And feeling more of a criminal all the time, you know. <laughs> Anyway, the judge announced a break. So as he was walking out of the courtroom, he went like this to me. So I followed him out into the passageway and he said, uh, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, I said, I would like to ask you that same question. <laughs> I don't believe that I should be here. He said, well, look, I'm going over to just to have a drink and a bite to eat. Would you join me? So the two of us went together to this little restaurant and we sat there for like 20 minutes and I had something to eat and I explained my whole predicament to him and he grinned and he said, oh, leave it to me. <laughs> so as soon as I got back in the courtroom, he, my name was the first one to be called and he, he announced the charges are dismissed. And I was reinstated and I just thought to myself, this is like justification. There were charges against me which were legitimate. Even though I had made an effort to, you know, through my own works, to remedy these things, it hadn't worked. And yet, just by meeting the judge and his grace to me, and his words to me, I'll never forget, just leave it to me, I'll fix it. I thought, wow. <laughs> and I was so glad I went to have a bite to eat with the judge. And he was just so sweet about it, and he announced that the charges are dismissed and you're free to go. And I thought, that was such a great moment. Because, you know, after two years, the accumulated fines could have been considerable, you know. Even though it was only a $20 thing, it would have amounted to many hundreds of dollars by then. But he just wiped it out, and I said, that's justification. I didn't deserve this. I would have had to plead guilty if I'd been asked, even though I'd made efforts to pay it. And and yet he, in one moment, declared me to be innocent of all charges. Powerful experience. And I realized how important it is to be sure of who your judge is and understand where he stands and where he's coming from. You had a different judge than I had. He, my judge said, Mr. Gravestark, why don't you pay your tickets? I said, I'm always in a hurry and I don't have time. He went, 30 oh. days in the county jail. <laughs> of course. I said, but, and he said, keep talking, we'll make it 60. Only time I shut up. <laughs> Boy, I, now we know how to do this. This is excellent. 2,500 sandwiches a day for 20 straight days. Oh, wow. That's a lot of fun. So now you have strong convictions. <laughs> I do have. I don't get tickets anymore. And if I do, I'd right. pay them, I'd pay right. them immediately. Yes. Yes. yes, I 
desperately tried not to get tickets myself. Uh, yeah. Wish I could have had lunch with that judge. But I'm <laughs> sorry, I have totally succeeded, but I'm getting <laughs> getting close to succeeding. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yet I have found myself so well treated. I've only had one ticket actually now for the last three or four years, which is incredible for me, you know. But I was testing out a little sports car. And I really just wanted to see how much it would do, you know. How. So I'm on the 91, a big freeway. And it happened to be reasonably clear. So I, I was sitting comfortably on 110. And, and I went straight past a cop without even seeing him. I mean, I was gone in an instant, you know. And then I hear this siren, and I was getting up to 115, and I knew I could do much more yet. Anyway, and of course, he pulls me over, and he says, uh, you didn't see me, did you? I said, no, I didn't. <laughs> he said, I know why. I said, I said, why? He said, you were flying low. <laughs> He said, I've clocked you, it's like 112. I said, I would really like to thank you very much for, for pulling me over. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, if you hadn't stopped me, I might have gone up to 150, you know? So I am very grateful that you have prevented me from going at a, even a much greater speed. You, you've done an excellent job here, and I'm very grateful. I kept saying this. <laughs> And he just stood there looking at me for a minute. He says, keep going. <laughs> and we stopped and chatted for like half an hour on the side of the road. We got on so well, we were like old friends. You know? And uh, he, by the time we were done, he said to me, he said, you know, if I book you at the speed you were doing, you'll lose your license. And I said, well, we wouldn't want to do that, would we? <laughs> he said, no, we wouldn't, would we? <laughs> He said, so I think I'm only going to book you for 85. I said, thank you so much. <laughs> and I went to traffic school the next day and wiped it out you know, and learned a big lesson. But see, that was grace again, you know. But I, well, you know, they gave you a choice. In Palm Springs, there's like 20 different traffic schools. I couldn't believe. There's comedy. That's, I went to comedy traffic school. <laughs> And I pretended, well, I didn't pretend that I was an Australian, but I pretended that I was an Australian who didn't know the road rules in this country. <laughs> it was a very comic experience, believe me. We laughed the whole time through it. But you can go to this Spanish traffic school, comedy traffic school, gay traffic school. There's all these different traffic schools. You can just take your pick, you know. I had the funniest day at that traffic school. It's a great system, isn't it? And so the one ticket I got was wiped away and I continued to remind myself this is like grace, you know. God is so willing to wipe these things away. Why would you be wanting to go 130? I know, and I've learned my lesson. Now. <laughs> but I still haven't found out I still haven't found out what its limit is yet. I haven't I need the I need the salt plains or something where I can I know. I know. But I, I truly have learned this lesson and I'm grateful for that, you know. One of these days, I'll drive up to Utah and get out on the salt plains there. And or in Germany, they have the automobile. Yes, right, right. All right, back to reality again. Did we get a second verse out yet or not? Hang on. The, who, the sec what did you have as your second verse here? Just give me... You didn't have a second verse. All right, coming back to this table again, we're getting desperate now. What did you guys have for your second verse? You said you had three. Read out 18. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. You're not. So to be under grace means to be led by the Spirit. Okay, a good... Uh, and, and building on your first point. The fulfillment of the law is love. Yes, and go on. And then... Our third verse was 22, and the fruit of the Spirit is Oh, love. I see. So you tied those three together like that. Mm -hmm. All right, so look at the, uh, take us through it again, the three steps again, how you put it together. Listen carefully. Verse 14, the fulfillment of the law is love. Okay. 
verse 18 says that to be under grace means to be led by the Spirit. Okay. And verse 22 says the fruit of the Spirit is love, which is the fulfillment of the law. Okay, so you find it. Very Amen. good, huh? Very, Amen. Very yeah. good uh, progress for you taking place, linking the three together. Okay. Wow. Is that qualified for translation? <laughs> um, <laughs> ask Mother. She will tell you. Ask Mother. But it does convince us that instead of doing away with the law, we're actually fulfilling it when we are under grace. grace. Right. Christ he came to fulfill the law. Oh, very. Repeat that again, Donna, a little more evangelistically. Listen to this. Well, if Christ came to fulfill the law, then Christ in us is Him still being able to fulfill the law. Amen. Yes. Wow. Beautiful. Important. A beautiful scripture that will buttress that and undergird it is Psalm 119. It says, oh, how I love the law, thy law. It's my meditation day and night. I mean, that's pretty powerful. Yes. Oh, how I love the law because it doesn't condemn me. I delight to I do, do thy will. Thy law, thy law is it within my heart. So there's a delight in doing the will of God when his law is in your heart. Yeah. You're not seeking to avoid it or right. escape it. You are delighting to do it because right. the Spirit has made the fulfillment right. of the law possible right. within you. Rivers of water run down mine eyes because they keep not thy law. You've become a loving and lovable Christian. Right. It's, it's not clearly you doing, it's Jesus in you. It's that's right, yeah. yes, yes. So without him in the heart, you cannot have a hope of doing it. And that's, that's reinforcing Donna's beautiful yeah. statement here. Yes. yes, wow. Very good things coming out here. And it seems to me that because David could make those statements, that God was doing the same process in the Old Testament and the New Testament. He hasn't changed. Oh, it's point. still by faith. Wow. Even wow. in the Old Amen. Testament, it was not by works. It was the faith Excellent. of Jesus yes. and David could cause him to say that, not yes. doing the law on his own. Wow. So the Old and the New Testament, it's the same thing. Amen. So a summary of this passage could be 24 and 25. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Wow. Mm. The great chapter, was that a... Uh, no, it was the, I have the Daily Walk Bible. Oh, okay. May I read something? It says, uh, this is verses 22 and 23. Okay, okay. It says, but when the Holy Spirit controls our lives... He will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. 23, gentleness and self-control. And here it is. Here, there is no conflict with the law. Oh, yeah. Very good. That's a very good uh, Excellent. Paraphrase. Excellent. Yes. Very well said. And there's just one little point in chapter 6 that we need to focus on. A lot of personal stuff here again, but there is something... That is too good to le to overlook, yes. And that's, well, I'm thinking especially of verses 1 through 4 anyway. Mm -hmm. 1 through 4. Yeah. Let's see, Eric, would you read out verses 1 through 4 for us, please? Brethren, even if a man is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and thus fulfill the law of Christ. Yeah. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. <laughs> but let each one examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone and not in regard to another. Hmm. Beautiful words, aren't they? Yes. Huh? How do you feel about verses 1 and 2, especially verse 1? Even if a man is caught in any trespass, any trespass, you who are, do you like this? You who are if you're not spiritual, what's your attitude going to be? 
condemnation. Forsaking. I had a little breakthrough with a man yesterday that was in church. And he was sharing with me later that he's not actually a member of the church. He's lost his membership in the church. He's been disfellowship. And yet he was in church yesterday. And I'm, maybe he's in church regularly. Not there anyway. But he just shared with me after church that he'd had a personal problem with me for 10 years. And I'm glad that he shared this with me. He walked into a meeting of mine at camp meeting, SoCal camp meeting, and he, he heard me saying that I wouldn't let people use Alan White to interpret the passage of Scripture. So instead of asking me, he assumed that I did not believe in Alan White. When what I was probably saying was, you know, that we're going to hear the Bible without Alan White. We're not going to let her do our thinking for us. We're going to hear the word for ourselves and then we'll bring Alan White in, which I always do. But he didn't hear all that. So he made an incorrect assumption that I was an unbeliever in Alan White, where nothing could be further from the truth, if you know me. And, uh, and so for 10 years he has carefully avoided me, but he got stuck in church yesterday, uh, we could say, <laughs> because of circumstances. He was forced to sit through the sermon, and he told me, I just sat there waiting must be horrible to live like this. He said, I sat through the whole sermon waiting for the moment when I could condemn you by disagreeing with you and it never came. I said, oh my goodness, maybe I've grown. <laughs> and he said, no, it was just beautiful. And he, was, uh, he said, I was so impacted by the word and by the spirit. And it was just a, a sweet experience. And I, I said to this man, I said, you know, I hope that you're not still hurting and suffering from those events that led you to be disfellowshipped from the church. Because from my knowledge of God, he is an extremely forgiving. Not only a forgiving God, but a forgetting God. Unlike human beings, God doesn't choose to keep throwing up to us our past mistakes. He justifies us, doesn't he? We've all made past mistakes. And humans can remind you of them. It's horrible. I know somebody that every time you meet them, they remind you of your past mistakes. After a while, you try not to meet people like that, don't you? Because there's nothing in it that encourages you. But God is not like that. When God justifies you, you have a clean sheet, slate. Your record is totally clean. I had a chance to share this with this man yesterday. This is God's grace. So when somebody is caught in a trespass, we who are spiritual, what is our duty, our obligation, our inclination will be because Christ is in us, not to condemn. Remember, Jesus is the one who took a stick and drew on the ground. Let him who is without sin. He was actually writing the sins of, of those who were condemning there on the ground. Go ahead and cast the first stone. That is so unlike God. We should be the most compassionate, the most understanding when someone is really caught in a trespass. We should act as instruments of Restoration, yes, we should become burden bearers, not sitting in judgment and condemning. Right. Problems, we should uh, have utmost of privacy and confidentiality yes. and share yes. it only with the Lord. Yes. And there yes. it should rest. That's that the, it should rest just there. It's personal and private. And if they share with you, it should be you, the person, and the Lord. Yes. Are you catching a glimpse here of the compassion of God? Mm -hmm. Just imagine if this was practiced at the human level. Mm. Think of how many people you know that may have sinned, fallen into trespass, who are like dogs with their tails between their legs because they felt the censure, the judgment, and... You know, sin does need to be called by its right name and dealt with. 
but it should always be accompanied with restoration and bringing people to the cross so they can taste the absolute forgiveness of God. Some of the worst condemnation I have seen over the years, believe it or not, has come from people who have been guilty of the same things themselves. And they've been redeemed from it, and yet they will sit in judgment on someone who is caught in the same problem that they had years ago. And I look at these people in absolute amazement. In fact, I had to rebuke a pastor not that long ago. I happened to be present when he was condemning another pastor who'd been caught in sin. And I looked at this man in amazement because I know what happened to him 20 years ago. I said, I can't believe what I'm hearing. So I said to him, have you never been on the other side of this? And he stopped dead. I said, have you never been on the other side of this equation? Think back. And he was stunned because I was the only person there that knew that, you know. So if you've been on the receiving end of forgiveness and restoration, you should be willing to become a part of it. Is that striking you today? Have you had experience with this? Have you tasted this? It's a very powerful thing. I was approached just a few weeks ago by a pastor who has not been pastoring for the last 10 years because of a grievous mistake that he made. And he was dismissed by his conference, a very prominent pastor. But because I've got a friendship with him that goes back many years, he approached me just recently and he looked at me almost sheepishly and he said, you know, I need you at the moment. I need someone to help me find a way back into ministry. And he said, I can't find anybody that will even be willing to support me in this. He said, I guess I can say with David, my sin is ever before me. I said, well, I'll tell you what, uh, far be it from me to hinder you if this is what God is calling you to do. It's a wonderful pastor, this man. I said, if you are prepared to be open and honest about what happened to you if anyone asks, especially if a president asks you, a president that I might approach in your behalf, if he's to ask you, why did you quit ministry? If you are prepared to be bold enough and honest enough to say because of this, but I've dealt with it. I'm totally restored and rehabilitated. I said, I will stick my neck out for you. So I said, it's in your hands. Otherwise, I'd be out on a limb on this. You know? And he looked at me and he said, well, I am prepared to be totally honest because I have found the healing by the grace of God. And he said, I believe I'm ready for ministry. So I'm at the moment contacting some presidents in, in his behalf and praying that a, an opening is going to come for him. And we need to do this, don't we? We can't cut a man off forever because he made a mistake in his life. Yes, yes. Anyone else had practical experience with this? Have you applied this principle? Have you had opportunity to do it? Or have you become the judge sitting in high places? Hmm? I appreciate the torrent of hands that are being raised at the moment. No one? Being the majority is going to come out the other churches, so we, you know, we all have to really look at ourselves very carefully. Yes, indeed. Examine ourselves to see whether yeah. we be there. No one else had experience with this principle. The only thing I wanted to say is that we either cut people off entirely or we don't cut people off at all. Sometimes it's effective to cut them off for a little bit of period of time and then take them back. And um, my brother had a lot of experience with that, even though he's a very worldly guy. He'll, he'll give a guy so many mistakes and he'll say, that's it, go, go work for somebody else. And they'll go and work for other people and then they'll come back and knock on the door and they'll say, you know, he'll say, well, he'll, they'll say, well, do you have any work? I, I need work. And he'll say, well, have you learned your lesson? And, you know, they'll say, yeah, I think so. And he goes, all right, go with the guys. Hmm. He'll put them right to work, you know. Wow. And, I, I mean, I've learned, I had to learn that from my brother. Excellent. My brother's worldly, and yet he yeah. knows how to do that. He understood that principle. He understands wow. that principle. He, wow. knows how to, he knows how to cut a person off for a period of time and take them back. <laughs> <laughs> I can't 
stop it. <laughs> Neville, yeah. Yeah. Um, that is yeah. my favourite song. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, um, not exactly. You know, the, um, you know, an experience I'm going to share. But I discovered in Psalm 30, verse 5, um, some time ago, the statement. We most of us know the second part. It says, "For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour for his grace." last a lifetime. And I find that very consoling. Psalm 30, verse 5. Most of us know part B, which says, weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. But the first part, I think, is just a marvelous expression of God's mm. grace mm. in the Old Testament. Mm. Okay, praise the Lord. And, and finding a chapter like that can be so meaningful yeah. to you. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I use Psalms 51 like that. I yeah. just love that prayer of David. Yeah. Have mercy upon me. Well, let us read through the final verses in uh, chapter 6 so that we all at least get to hear them. Let's take one verse each. Uh, Joanne, would you start reading for us beginning at verse uh, 5? And just take one verse each and we'll go right to the end of the chapter. For each one shall bear his own load. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Well, that's a good verse. I must remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 6, yes. That was verse uh, 6. Neville? Verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. Mm. Great principle. Look at these principles coming through mm -hmm. here. The one who sows to his own flesh will reap from the same, will flow from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Amen. Amen. Mm. Mm -hmm. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in, so in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Mm. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Well, it's not an interesting statement, huh? Do good to all, but especially mm. to fellow believers, huh? Mm -hmm. Amen. It's okay to be kind to fellow believers, you know? Very good. Incredibly. <clears throat> all right, uh, Lou Ann, would you pick up from there? Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. Those who desire to make a good showing in the flesh try to compel you to be circumcised simply so that they will not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Mm -hmm. Not even those who are circumcised obey the law. Yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your flesh. <laughs> Look at the reasons they had for trying to push people into circumcision. For that to save their own oh. themselves from persecution. On one well, the, hand. What I heard from that, and, I, and I'm not sure it's totally on base, but that they may glory in your flesh. It's another number. It's somebody else yeah, counted yeah, exactly. in the, in the, in the wow. booty. Yeah, that's what, that's what I heard. Okay, Steve, can you pick up from there, verse uh, 14? 14. But may it never be that I would boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. So where have you been crucified? Uh -huh. On the cross. Please the hear cross. it. This is Paul's theology coming through again. Our crucifixion. To the world and the world's crucifixion to us yes, took place in the death of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. That was my death to sin taking place. Some people think that they can crucify their old nature by begging God every day to help them to be more spiritual and help, help me not to be fleshly. It's an act of faith to take hold of the death of Jesus, believing that was my death to sin taking place on the cross. I was crucified with him. Amen. And that's past sins or the sins we're struggling today? It's, to a, it's renewed every day of our lives as we come to the cross. We look at it anew. We die daily 
by coming to the cross, not by struggling against ourselves and asking God to make us stronger. We come to the cross every day and renew our confidence that our death to sin took place in his death. So basically the new nature came right in us, the new spirit, the new mind. And it's the renewed new, daily new as daily. we come to the cross again. Yes. The A lot of people do not get this. That's why I did this series on victory in Jesus. For that great teaching to come out that I am not victorious by wrestling. Right. I'm but victorious by, by believing. Yeah. In our faith. Yes, it's a faith experience. All right. Uh, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. Amen. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Finally, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace, spiritual favor, blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, be with you, with your spirit, brethren. Amen. Amen. You know, this is a very historic moment, don't you? This is the first time, this is the first time ever in history that an epistle has actually been finished. <laughs> this is a major development here. A major development. We never have finished an epistle before in all these years until this moment. This is very historic. <laughs> you wanted Daniel so badly that you got through this. So as we conclude, perfect time to... Oh, wow. I don't know what we're going to dish it up with. Unless somebody has a phone or a sign over. Oh, he'll go borrow one from the church. So anyway, there's enough for all of you if you want to stay in the Really? Oh, my food. goodness. It is delicious food. We tasted it last night. Very delicious food. And the, the Ethiopian bread is to die for. It is so good. Mm. Well, thank you for that offer, Pat. Well, just as we conclude, listen carefully. Listen carefully. Usually... There's something in an epistle like this which has touched you personally. And if that is the case, I'd like to just take a minute for that to come through. If there's anyone sitting here that's been touched by something in this epistle and it has profoundly affected you and strengthened not only your understanding of what God has offered you in Christ, but your relationship with Christ and your assurance of salvation and God's completed work in you. There's been a number of things like that have come out this weekend. I would love to hear from you. So here's an opportunity for anybody who's been touched by the Word just to share what that was that touched you and to give God the glory. Anybody at this table? I'm going to go from table to table. If the pickings are slim, I'll go to the next table. Anybody at this table who's been touched specifically by some passage in, in, in Galatians and you'd want to give God the praise for that one verse, maybe a teaching. There's been some profound things have come through. Donna is responding, okay. Okay. The fulfillment of Christ's work. And what are you translating that as, Tom? Um, Did you have a particular verse in mind you were putting? It's the whole study from, from chapter 5. And, and oh, okay. Freedom and, and oh, the freedom. That was very profound, yes. what yes, came so out of that. that it, if I'm not feeling the love, I really need to let go of myself uh -huh. and stop having my own. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, that pity party thing. Okay, now that's, that's incredible. Praise God. Anyone else at this table? Mine is similar, but I'm not alone. Ah, not alone. Praise God. Huh? Yeah. So therefore you are no longer a slave of a son, a son and a parent. Mm, mm, mm. What a privilege, huh? Beautiful, beautiful testimonies. 
All right, moving to this table. Anyone here? Becky? Um, this has been helpful because, even though I've heard it a million times, but the, I, um, the, the, the death of, I do ask God for strength. <laughs> and, and I'm asking for the wrong thing. And ah. so it's getting me off track. Mm. And so, um, and looking on the cru crucifixion is a, um, it is only by faith. I mean, I think it's, when I think I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh. And so having the list of freedoms, mm. which in little pieces I have experienced some yes, th these, yeah. then I'm understanding that I have to take these freedoms and that they've come through the Spirit, they're not through my efforts, because I certainly did not have these freedoms before. Mm. It's like integrating it oh. is helpful. Okay, praise God. That, mm -hmm. That's growth, you know, that is growth. Mm -hmm. Praise God. All right, moving to the next table. Anyone here? Impacted by the Word and praising God? Yes, Robert. I was impacted by the Word from the first time we started this series in Galatians. So I had been reading through it and absorbing mm. it. Mm. If I can relate a quick story. I would prefer you to re go to a verse and pull it out for us. Principle that it, that. What what verse in Galatians are you basing this on? That's what we want to hear. One, bear one another's burdens. Oh, bear one another's burdens. And okay. allow others to, allow those who may have sinned oh, right. to rejoin your group. Oh, okay. And you had an illustration of that? I do. Okay. First hand, briefly. first hand, first person. Okay. Some year, several years ago, a man was coming to our Friday morning Bible men's Bible study. He had been in prison. He violated parole, and he was put back in prison, struggling with a variety of issues. Mm -hmm. He was out past his probation, trying to make it in the world, in just day to day. Because I have experience in sprinkler systems, we were putting a new sprinkler system in the uh, south property of the church. This man can run a backhoe, run machinery, pick up the other end of the stick. He knows what to do with it in a teamwork. Someone complained, suggesting because he was staying in his little motor home, trying to get enough money to actually secure it as his own. Hmm. and suggested to a policeman in the city that he may be too close to the school and suggested hmm. that his actions before hmm. violated his hmm. ability to stay within so many feet of a school. Hmm. A policeman called me through the because the church secretary wanted to know. Hmm. Then the policeman came out while I was working in the afternoon and immediately began to question me as if I was that individual and I mm. suggested to him strongly that I didn't have time for his inquiry the second time. Mm. Then he wanted to see my ID and I showed it to him in my wallet and then he couldn't see it and I suggested that maybe he couldn't read <laughs> <laughs> and he asked me the questions the fir third, fourth and sixth time and I said once I gave you the right answer the first time and I was defending this individual and recommended that maybe he ought to look somewhere else. So he took my identification and confirmed that it, what I had told him was correct as far as who I was. Mm -hmm. And I expressed to him my displeasure with regard to his persistence for continuing to badger. Later, when he was satisfied with, with my ID, he left vowing to secure his mission one way or the other. He went, he talked, he had a conversation with the pastor before my, my first encounter with him and afterwards. A day or two later he called back to the pastor and apologized for his huh? behavior. 
In the meantime, I called an elder who I knew, and we worked closely together with this former prisoner. And we secured, through the work of one of my fellow elders, a place for him to stay, hmm. safe, hmm. employed, and continuing to be a part of the body. Mm, very good. Amen. That's certainly and, very and Galatians has spoken to yeah. me in that way. Yeah, I amen. Know.